I'm Tamara Conniff with The Comet, and we are here with Oscar-winning composer Rachel Portman. How did you break into the business? I mean, it's a really competitive industry. Yep. How did it kind of happen for you? I had seen Alan Parker give a talk. I sent him an audio cassette, of a little audio cassette of my only piece of music that I've ever written, and that was for a student film, and said, do you know what I could do with this? Because I had no contacts, no leads. And he sent it on to this producer, David Putnam, who did Chariots of Fire and, you know, The, the Killing Fields. And uh, within a week, I was sitting with David and he said, look, I've got this film uh, and I'm not happy with the music. It's about to come out. Do you want to just have a look at it and see if you can come up with an idea? And that was my golden apple. I didn't realise it at the time, so I took it away and went away. I came back with another little cassette of the new piano theme uh, the next week. And uh, he said, right, you're on. You have two and a half weeks. Off you go. And I did the music for this film. What was that like for you when you won the Oscar for Emma? I was not expecting to win at all, and I was just there for the party. Were you speechless? Did you even think about what you would say? I had a little tiny piece of paper prepared because I thought you just have to, because it would be so nerve-wracking to win and, and then not have any words to come out, so I did, but it hadn't been properly prepared or anything. Your new film is um, getting some buzz already. Yes. What was the process of, of doing the, the music for Never Let Me Go? Some films I work on, I have very little time. Never Let Me Go is more reasonable. I had about two months on that. In this case, I watched the film before I was offered the film and then talked to the director, Mark Romanek, and the producers about what I thought the music would be, um, which is fairly late on in the process, actually. I think writing music for films is so much to do with your intuition about what you think will work for something. And whenever I start working on a film, I always feel I'm on the outside of a film. And then when I watched it several times, I sort of step into the world and then music just comes. What about Chocolat? You said you had, like, what, like three and a half weeks? Yeah, I had really little time oh on Chocolat. Oh my God, yeah. what was that like? I loved having so little time because I really couldn't think. I just had to dive in there and write and it just all poured out. You, you have no fear, so you just step in there and, and uh, get on with it. When did you start composing? I understand you were very young. I started writing when I was about 13, 14. And then I discovered I wanted to write for theatre or television more when I was 20, 21, because I didn't come from a background of film. A lot of people have asked me, has it been difficult for you working in a, uh, a field that's predominantly male? And I've never had that. And I think, I think that's partly because I, I went to a, uh, an all boys school to study. And so it just never occurred to me. Right even when things were very difficult in my 20s, and I would get a job and then I wouldn't get another job for quite a while, and I'd be doing sort of voluntary work and waitressing and things like that. I, I was just so determined that I would break through one day that, that I never gave up. It shouldn't be just like, oh, I'll do some music and put any old lyrics on it. The feeling of the music feeds the feeling of the lyrics and vice versa. They're all the same universe and they kind of whirl around each other, making it more and more intense, I guess.